So I am an avid Twitter user, Facebook, any social media tool, mostly for the research that I do in building communities. And what has happened to my research, I've started talking more about social boundaries and the presentation of self and this creation of communities and boundaries within those communities. On the other side of me, I'm a space geek. My father worked for Apollo. He was a crazy inventor man, worked on the lunar landing module. To me, getting into space was an everyday thing. It was going to happen. You know, this was part of, part of my everyday life. But I have been a space geek since I was a little kid. So following NASA, seeing you know, what, what's happening with manned space flight has been an interest of mine. And uh, I had a very good friend who was uh, at a shuttle launch, two friends who were at a shuttle launch, and I suddenly got very jealous that they went to a shuttle launch and I've never been to one, and suddenly the space program's going away. How do I get to a shuttle launch? Well, it turns out that one of these friends actually told me one day, here, sign up. It's the NASA tweet up. And, uh, and I did. I remember sitting there at the table, putting my name in. 2,500 people signed up for uh, the NASA tweet up for STS-133, the Space Shuttle Discovery Launch. 150 people were selected, and you'll hear more from Stephanie on our panel about how the, how the tweet up worked. And I was one of those 150 that, that was selected. And I was coming to Orlando for, I was going to Orlando for a conference. I already had a hotel room, but I thought, no, I want to stay in a house. It'll be nice. Who knows how long we have to stay down there. So I found this house online, an enormous house online. And all of a sudden, all of these other people who got selected started tweeting with the NASA tweet up hashtag. And I put this, this we started an email list right away, Google, 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 Google group right away. And I put out this note, let's get a, we're going to get a house. And actually, it was Andy and I um, who grabbed this house. We, we named it the big house. But 15 people, without knowing each other, within about two days, decided we were going to live together for a week. And we had absolutely no boundaries. Yes, I'm in complete and absolute trust. We had never met before. This is what all of my research was about. And I suddenly had a control group of 150 people to study. This was uh, a completely new thing. You know, social media showed me that there was a community that I didn't expect there to be. So when I got to go to the tweet up, it was actually my second launch. But what was awesome for me was this community of, of space lovers and shuttle huggers that I had never <laughs> known existed. And I include myself in that community of shuttle huggers. Thank and you. And you don't have to be a confirmed NASA geek to sign up for a tweet up because sure. we'll make you one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, that was one thing. We had a couple of people sort of glom onto the group who had signed up out of curiosity and didn't really know what it was to be a space geek and maybe didn't know who Buzz Aldrin was and who learned a lot and who became you know, certifiable space geeks during the process. So it makes me really, really hopeful for the future of space flight. I mean, right now we're really uncertain. We're ending the shuttle. The US might not fly for a while. That's, that's terrifying to me who grew up with the shuttle program. That's completely terrifying. But you see all these people who love it so completely and who are from every imaginable career field. And you just think, if this level of passion exists now for a program that is ending, for a program that has been around for 30 years, with this level of energy, it seems unfathomable to me that we will stop flying altogether. Like it, it makes me feel really, really good about the future of space flight. Somehow, we're going to keep human beings in space, and we're going to maybe leave low Earth orbit, and we're going to you know, visit the moon again and maybe see Mars. And you know, just knowing that this community exists really sort of cements that hope in me. NASA sending us to the shuttle launch was the most incredible experience any of us had ex ever had. I mean, there was not a dry eye at the press site. It's an incredible thing. We deeply, deeply, deeply love NASA. But if NASA's not going to space, then we're going to be talking about who is. You know, like, how many people know who Bigelow Airspace is? God, that's not enough. So there are two <laughs> space stations, inflatable space stations, in orbit right now that have been in orbit for four years successfully. Bigelow, the guy, what is his hotel chain? Is he uh, uh, Hotel 8? Hang on, I'll find out. Hotel. We'll find out. Uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's a hotelier uh, in Vegas. He made these inflatable uh, space stations, and they've been in orbit for four years. Bigelow Airspace. All he needs is a ride. The space hotel is in orbit right now. So you tell people these things, and they think like, oh, yeah, yeah, the shuttle, uh, and that goes up to the space station every once in a while. No, there has been a human being in space 
continuously, nonstop, for the past decade. And when you tell people that, they think, oh, you mean year, like we've had somebody up there, we've been rotating for the past year, no, decade. And you start telling people these things. SpaceX, they launched the Dragon capsule, some people know about it, they went in orbit, they orbited twice. Uh, there's incredible things that are happening right now, and we're not gonna stop talking about them.